Glass making in Turkey has been based in Istanbul's Beykoz district since the early 19th century. We visit the glass furnace, which sits on the grounds of the old Pasha Bashe factory. It resembles an artist retreat. It's become one of the world's leading glass schools, hosting artists, masters, and apprentices from around the world, offering workshops and experimenting with their craft. Far from Istanbul's bustle, we talk with the master, Vladimir Klin, from the Czech Republic. This is a piece, what I call heart. It's my heart, what I gave to Turkey. I am here already six times, and I did this piece several years ago. And we began to shape the glass cullet. It's a material what looks like a junk material, and we are using it for these nice pieces. It means we can grind it and cut it, polish it, to, to get a nice express of the transparent glass. So you don't work with the oven? No, we are, uh, we are working in the cold stage, and our work we call cold working. I'm a glass artist from Czech Republic, the country with a long, uh, long time tradition of glass making. And I studied all techniques, and I was working also like a designer in a big company, and I did design for all techniques. But by myself, mostly I am doing uh, glass sculpture, uh, of a big large or a large uh, scale, a large size, uh, working with the glass like with the stone. Some pieces are over 100 kilograms and over one meter or so. There in my country, what I have. No, my base is in a North, uh, North Bohemia or North Czechia. It means uh, the, the, the town of name Novi Bor, where is a good tradition of glass making. But sure, Prague is close, it's only 100 kilometers from my town. To work with the glass already in 1965, studied in glass making school in Kamenitsky Chenov, what is uh, oldest glass making school in the, over the world. And then after I studied in Academy of Applied Arts, it means I studied glass art for 10 years, and I can tell I'm learning still. <laughs> But there are pieces from 70s, 80s, what I'm working for already, from this side. Everything is code working, engraving and cutting, polishing. The pieces, country of, uh, colors of my country, when former Czechoslovakia split it, and I expressed how I was afraid, it was a little express of the stress and tension before this splitting. Yeah. Mostly pieces what I did there in Japan. This tear. Tear. Yeah. Bad dream. <laughs> You can see is the chipping by chisel and hammer. And it has a kind of function like a plate or something like this. Mostly employed by my stay in Japan. They serve uh, Japanese sashimi on the plates, shape it like a bowl. They call it funamori. <laughs> I will tell you. Uh, Czechoslovakia is not more. This country, is, uh, this republic, is split it for two countries, Slovak and, and Czech Republic. And but also it's the same with the glass industry. Uh, the big companies mm, they are not working there because of mm, strong competition from the east, even from from Turkey. When I was a d uh, designer, we looked every time and checked uh, the result of Pas uh, Pasha Bace. Uh, it was competition for us. I am uh, lucky to be here and to give my experience to, to students who has an interest about because I was teaching 14 years in Czech Republic, four years in Japan. I am teaching in, in German and in Belgium and glad to be here also in Turkey because for me it's important not only to teach but also 
to be educated by the culture and by the experience with the peoples here, something like this. Been working uh, as a independent artist for the last ten or so years. Uh, patience is definitely a, a helpful trait to have, um, and you, you just have to be able to understand that glass is fragile; it's going to break. It's not always going to turn out the way you want it to. Uh, it takes a very long time to to perfect the craft and to be really good at it. So there's a, a lot of trial and error. Uh, I mean, even this piece that we just made today didn't go how we planned on. Um, so we'll make it again, and each time it'll be better. The focus of the class is actually to combine uh, hot working and blowing techniques with casting techniques. So what we did is we made uh, a, a goblet, you know, like a drinking vessel, but we made it solid, uh, and then we tried to encase it in a block of glass. And so we made it out of clear glass, then we coated it with a, a light dusting of colored powder glass so that once it got filled up and encased it would look like a silhouette of the goblet floating uh, in a block of clear glass. Pino Kerchi, originally from the Italian island of Sardinia, has been living in the USA for years. Kerchi began as a stained glass restorer in France and has been continuing with his glass artwork for more than 28 years. I think you need, uh, yes, I mean, you have to have like an open mind, you know, you not be afraid to, uh, to try, uh, you know, I mean, th this is all what, it, what it's all about, actually, you know. It's like you work with, with, uh, with painting, you know, you use different kinds of colors, so uh, for some projects you might want to use a transparent color, other projects more opaque, it just, it just depends what are you working on it. <coughs> Uh, well, Jeff told you that we use the powder today because, as I said, we were kind of experimenting. Uh, maybe next time we will use more like a solid color, uh, more consistent than, than this one. So it will help us actually to, uh, to keep the cup all together. Uh, in glass is not, uh, I, don't, uh, I mean, I don't think that the color is extremely important. You can do beautiful things also with clear glass. It's just, it's just the way that you manipulate the, uh, uh, the, the glass that makes it interesting. Or we've been working together for like the, almost four years with, with Jeff. So we kind of we have a feeling about what we're going to do. Uh, I, I mentioned experimental because uh, we would like to show something different to the students. So they can eventually... I mean, we, we would like to give them a, a broad range of idea that they, they can, uh, they can experiment. They will hopefully change their way, their their approach, uh, working in glass. Uh, we were trying to make a floating goblet. We got this idea yesterday. You know, most of the things that that, that, that we do in in school, they're like, well, they're things that we come up of overnight. It's just you know. I, I think somebody dropped a, a goblet in the in the pool in the swimming pool, so and we we, we saw this goblet in the water. We thought, well, it would be nice to make to make something like this, you know, a permanent floating object. And uh, well, we tried this morning. It didn't really turn out like we wanted. Uh, so there, there, you know, most of most of the time we're dealing with technical um, um, problems. It's not. I mean, the idea, the concept. It's kind of easy to come up with, but you know it's glass. It moves. It, there's a lots of heat, and and um, but I mean, you know, after all, it didn't turn out bad. I just put it back in the on the annealer. So the glass furnace was established by Yilmaz Yalchinkaya with the idea of promoting and supporting the art of glass in Turkey. We talk with his daughter Elif. This is a glass furnace foundation which was built in 2002. Uh, in the summer courses, two week courses, we always have worldwide known glass artists. Most of them are, all of them are international artists. They are coming from Asia, America, um, Europe. Czech Republic is a very, you know, it's well known in glass, so we have a lot of 
teachers from there. Also, we have a lot international students, a lot. They love Istanbul when they come, so it's nice to have two weeks with art, class, and Istanbul, so they have the opportunity to enjoy all of them. We have a nice, very nice river side, um, a big garden, as you can see. The Dem Chapa's gallery, Bir Nokta, lies in the heart of Beolu. On the terrace looking over the church of Sant Antonio, there was a glass show. Evet, Bir Nokta galerisinde kesişim sergisindeyiz. Bu sergide 10 Norveçli sanatçı, 10 e, Türk sanatçıyla buluştu ve cam alanında e, güzel bir sergi oluşturdular. İzmirliyim. İstanbul'u çok seviyorum. Ben İstanbul'da okumak istiyordum Mimar Sinan Güzel Sanatlar'da. Fakat babam bana çok düşkün olduğu için izin vermedi burada okumama açıkçası. İstanbul'a aşığım. Her şeyini çok seviyorum. Yani burada aşık oldum, burada evlendim. Herkes gibi ben de İstanbul'u tabii ki bu karmaşası, onun dışında o tarihi güzelliği, boğazı, tarihi yarımadası beni çok etkiliyor. Her vapura bindiğimde, hep onların önünden geçtiğimde kafamı başka yere çeviremiyorum o tarihi güzellikleri izlerken. Uyguladığım teknik, uygulama açısından çok zor bir teknik. Biraz fazla emek istiyor. Bizim toplumumuzda aslında baktığınız zaman kırılabilir, kırılgan objelere daha az önem verildiği, bu alanda daha az sergi açıldığını görüyoruz. Ee, belki bu biraz da tarihimizde e, savaş tarihimizde savaşların fazlaca olması sebebinden kaynaklanıyor olabilir. E, çünkü insanlar kırılabilir objeleri e, seçip satın alıp evlerinde bulundurmaktan imtina ediyorlar. E, ama buna karşın e, bir bronz objeyi e, almak onlar açısından e, daha kolay oluyor. Metal objeleri seçtiklerini daha fazla tercih ettiklerini görüyoruz. Bu geçmişten gelen e, bu sebeple oluşan bir duygu. Biraz bunu değiştirmeye çalışıyoruz aslında. Belirli bir ölçüde de değiştirdiğimizi düşünüyorum. Yine e, baktığımızda daha oryantalist bir bakış açısına sahip olduklarını görüyoruz sanatçılarımızın. My name is Yasmin Azlan Bakiri. Uh, I'm glass artist. Glass as a medium is uh, strikes as a medium strikes me a lot, and such a different material from the other uh, art uh, mediums uh, because transparent uh, and while it's hot, it gets cold so quick. It's amaze me. After graduation, I went to Italy. I visit Murano. I have a bursary in Italy. Uh, I did work with the company 
as a uh, designer in a few months. And afterwards, I went to England and I decided to study, with, uh, to carry on with glass. As artwork is getting better and better in Istanbul and uh, getting bigger and bigger uh, because there are so many uh, academies now, uh, universities, uh, there are glass departments mainly and lots of uh, graduate students is coming out and hopefully they will be working as an artist or designer. Uh, hopefully they will choose to work, carry on with glass. Uh, I combine this work with brass. I love working with metal. And this work I choose working with brass and also lead. I use different techniques in glass. There are many techniques in glass. I use hot glass, cold glass and uh, fused glass. Uh, but as well as glass, I also like working with metal. Uh, most of my work I combine with metal, uh, mainly brass and uh, stainless steel. And also I have a special uh, design uh, pattern uh, I do with glass and metal together. I use metal mesh, which is hand woven. Uh, with my other works, uh, the works called kaftans, the dress, glass dresses, big glass dresses, and I use uh, glass and hand woven mesh with that, those materials. Woven metal by hand and cast glass and stitch together. Uh, I love the way it is transparent. Uh, but also these are also handmade metals. Uh, goes together. For especially the glass, uh, it, it looks hard and metal seems really light, but normally glass is very warm material while well, it's hot, it's so soft. Suddenly it changes, it's very temperamental, it, it becomes really hard. I have different periods, different works I do, uh, but mainly my main uh, work kaftan takes quite a long time. It takes three months. It's quite detailed work because I have to woven the metal mesh and then I have to make the glass and I have to stitch together. I like experimental work. I like pushing the glass with different barrier, different level. And because uh, we use glass as a functional uh, drinking glass, eating our food. Uh, also, I love using glass with different uh, space and as an artwork, which is very difficult uh, to work with glass because it's hot, very temperamental, and all the time you can't go to result. You have to take the risk. Maybe that's one of the reasons I like take I like taking risks and I like working this material because it's so changeable and uh, also you can control it's, it's it's under your control this material i'm not very uh, very patient person but this ma material teach you to be patient to be tolerant uh, also to to accept the result i mean uh, not every time you work you do things it comes wonderful you can always get bad work and you can... surprising or do you know more or less what you... Of course you do more or less uh, when you work with this uh, material long time. But also every time you do new work it's a surprise. Doesn't matter how much you know, how much you are mastering the work or material or the technique. Always there are even 5% or 2%, there are always risk and uh, disappointment or surprise, which is, which is good to work with. Bir örnek vermek gerekirse yaptığım çalışmalarla. Şimdi mesela bu inclination ismi hafif eğimli gördüğünüz gibi altındaki kanal e, tamamen e, av, e, el ergonomisine uygun. Dolayısıyla o eğimden dolayı da parmağınızla e, kanala e, kanaldan kavrayabiliyorsunuz. Dolayısıyla bardağı böyle değil, alttan tutuyorsunuz. Bir viski uzun süreli içilen bir e, içkidir. Dolayısıyla böyle değil, alttan kavrayarak daha rahat, daha ergonomik, e, daha uyumlu tutuyorsunuz bardağı. Önce, e, şimdi tabii ki endüstri tasarımcısı olduğum için, e, öncelikle benim için kullanım önemli. 
oluyor. Yani tasarladığım şeyin mutlaka e, bir gereksinimi karşılaması, artı kolay kullanılması, insana uyum. Yani bir bardaksa o sizin elinize iyi uymalı veya daha kolay tutabilmelisiniz. Bunları ön planda tutuyorum. Tabii bunları ön planda tutarken geometri çok ön plana çıkıyor. Bununla birlikte işte bir takım fizik kuralları gibi yansıma kuralları gibi onları düşünüyorum. Çünkü yaptığınız bir üründe cam çok iyi bir yansıtıcı aynı zamanda. Eğer yüzeyleri iyi kullanırsanız yaptığınız ürünlerde iyi yansımalar elde edebilirsiniz. Olduğundan daha farklı bir şekilde gösterebilirsiniz tasarımınızı. Öncelikle onlar, A, tabii ki bu doğa olarak da doğa kaynaklı da pek çok esinlenmem oluyor. Ama onları direkt bir doğadan aldığım gibi değil, o doğanın içindeki geometriyi ortaya çıkarmaya çalışıyorum. Farklı geometriler var. Aslında doğada bir takım farklı geometrilerin kesişiminden ortaya çıkıyor doğadaki bir takım formlar. Bunları daha detaya inerek bunları daha incelemeye çalışıyorum. Galerimizin adını bir nokta koyduk. Çünkü bir nokta bütün çizgilerin başlaması için öncelikle bir noktaya ihtiyaç var. O sebeple seçtik. Çok küçük gibi duruyor ama aslında çok kapsamlı. Çünkü çok güçlü şeyler bile, atom çekirdeği bile bir küçücük bir nokta sonuçta. Biz bu ismi ayrıca önemsiyoruz. Çünkü Türkiye'de hani bir noktada buluşmak gibi bir terim vardır. Bir nokta konulduğu, ismi konulduğu andan beri yaptığı sergilerle birçok insanın dikkatini çekti. Ve bugün kültür, sanat, tasarım dünyasından hatta iş dünyasından birçok insan bizim sergilerimize katılıyor. Bir yıldan biraz fazla bir süredir açık olmamıza rağmen yaklaşık 750 kişinin üzerinde katılım sağladığımız sergilerimiz oldu. Bu da insanların bir noktayı bir şekilde kabul ettiği, benimsediği ve yaptığı sergilere önem verdiğini gösteriyor. Life goes around and it stops somewhere and we still carry on. The life goes on.